I'm Christina. I'm going to talk to you about the eggnog riot. So, it happens on December 24th to December 25th in 1826 at the North Barrack at West Point Academy. Total of about a third of the cadets were involved, 260, so that would be like 90 cadets. To give you a little bit of context of what was going on at the time in the country, John Quincy Adams was the president. <laughs> There's only, yeah. yeah. There's only 24 stars on that flag, and Hamilton, the guy in the corner over there, was a guy that just died and not a musical yet. <laughs> so in the 1700s, eggnog, in addition to being a Christmas drink, it was also an incredibly patriotic drink. George Washington famously has a recipe that is basically half alcohol. It has, yeah. Yeah. he was a lush. So it has rye, rum, sherry, and brandy, in addition to the milk, sugar, and eggs. So, so in England, this drink was incredibly expensive and out of touch for most of the people. But in the United States, we had access to milk, eggs, and a very healthy trade with the Caribbean at the time for rum and sugar. West Point, formerly known as the United States Military Academy, was established in March 16th on 1802 by Thomas Jefferson as the Academy. This is the longest running military outpost in the United States. This is a very prestigious military academy and has an acceptance rate about only 10%. But it wasn't always a prestigious military place. It was very rough and tumble. So Thomas Jefferson tasked this fella Colonel Sylvanus Thayer to turn the image around. And with a name like Sylvanus, you know he's going to be a hard ass. <laughs> but. So he's also known as the father of West Point. And to turn the image around of the academy, he prohibited alcohol, Ooh. intoxication, what? cooking in your dorm, what? and dueling. Uh, but he was a man that loved science yeah. and math yeah. and engineering. engineering. <laughs> and so he made these subjects the core of, of the curriculum at West Point. He actually has a lizard named after him, the Eastern Fence Lizard. Yeah. So... <laughs> So he expected nothing but excellence from the staff and the students there. He actually handpicked all of the staff and the students. And he made all the students pre-sign letters of resignation just in case of expulsion. Hard ass. So there used to be a tavern on campus called North Tavern, but he bought it and turned it into a hospital. December 22nd, William R. Burnley, Alexander Center, and Samuel Alexander Roberts, as portrayed um, by these fellows here, they were determined to have a Christmas rager. They were denied alcohol at their July 4th party. Oh, no. <laughs> so they took a boat, tiny ship, and sailed it across the Hudson River to Martin's Tavern to buy four gallons of whiskey. <laughs> they actually got caught as they were doing this, and they paid the guard a whopping 35 cents, or $7.50 in today's money, as a bribe. <laughs> December 23rd, business as usual, nothing crazy happens. The cadets basically just start sneaking away food in their rooms for the party later. And this is when the South Hall catches rumors of the impending party that's about to happen. Now Thayer, he's no idiot. He figures that Christmas Eve, the cadets probably have alcohol squirreled away in their houses, or in their uh, dorms. So he assigns Captain Ethan Allen Hitchcock and Lieutenant William A. Thornton to monitor the barracks. It's pretty quiet that night, and so they decide to go to bed at midnight. Four hours later, Hitchcock wakes up and hears partying a few floors above in room 28. 
So he goes to break it up. He finds six boys drunk and singing and two of them asleep. So what he does is he reads them the riot act, which stated that the group was congregating unlawfully and could be punished and made them go to their rooms. So the boys, they decided that their party wasn't over. They waited for Hitchcock to go to bed and they doorbell ditch him. They doorbell ditch him three times. <laughs> by the third time, <laughs> by the third time, <laughs> oh. so by the third time Hitchcock got awoken, he heard another party going on. So he goes to check on what the hell is happening. So he catches two cadets hiding under a blanket. <laughs> and one cadet using a hat as a mask to conceal his identity. So Hitchcock then demands to see the cadet's face, but was interrupted by a louder, rowdier party from downstairs. So he gives up on this one and goes to stop the other one. Now these cadets are upset that their party is interrupted. And one of the cadets claims, get your dirks and bayonets and pistols if you have them. Before this night is over, Hitchcock will be dead. <laughs> so as Hitchcock is going downstairs, he sees Jefferson Davis. Yes, future president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis, drunk in the hallway, just leaving the party. Jefferson Davis turns around and yells into the room, put away the grog boys, Cap oh, Captain Hitchcock is coming. So Hitchcock then orders Davis back to his room. Now Davis is known for being a lush. He once fell down a ravine because he was so drunk. So what does Davis do when demanded by his officer breaking up a party? He complies, he goes to his room, and that's what basically saves him from being court-martialed. Now Thayer, oh wait, no, Thornton. Thornton is also running around breaking up parties and he actually has a rougher time of it. He has a cadet threaten him with a sword and another one hit him with a piece of wood, <laughs> WWE style. So by this time, Hitchcock is returning to his room and he's got cadets following him. So he goes and locks, it, locks himself in his room. Now the cadets are at this point pounding on the door, trying to break it open to get at Hitchcock. One of the cadets pulls out their pistol and opens fires. The bullet goes into the do door jam only because he was jostled by another cadet. So when Hitchcock hears the bullet, he realizes that this is too much for just him and Thornton to be able to deal with. He then proclaims, bring the comms. By comms, he meant the commandant of cadets, William Worth. The cadets thought he wanted the, bo the bombardiers, which were the artillerymen. So what the cadets do, and this is when all hell breaks loose, the cadets start taking up arms to defend themselves. They start destroying things. They break windows, they break furniture, they pull banisters out of the wall. And in the chaos, Thornton gets knocked out cold. He actually awakens later in his room because someone took him there. This all basically ends just in time for the 605 Revelee. At this point, you can still hear cadets drinking and partying. And some of them decide to go and line up for formation anyways. But you can tell who's been clearly drinking and who's been sleeping all night. So. Now they, they are tasked, Alexander Maycomb, to figure out what was going on. So he places two orders, one on December 26, uh, order number 98, which places 22 cadets under house arrest. And on December 30th, he orders the Inquisition to find out the key players and who started the riots. The inquiry was a total of 167 witnesses and, said, and stated that $168.83, which is about $3,600 worth of damages, were made. From these inquiries came court martials, 20 cases, January 24th to March 16th in 1827. These court martials were such a big deal that they went all the way up to the Secretary of War and the President, John Quincy Adams. 
May 3rd, May 3rd is when John Adams closed the case, closed all the cases. So 19 cadets were expelled and one soldier, Private John Dugan, was sentenced to one month hard labor and no whiskey. The riots actually affected how the barracks in 1840 were built. These barracks were built without interior floor-to-floor -floor access anymore. If you look at this building, there's a funny-looking window in the corner. That's a door. So there must have been stairs there at one point. This barrack is still standing on the campus called the Ordnance Compound Barracks. So not many people know about this, even the students, the alum, and staff at West Point. They've done a great job at covering it up. I found this because I was actually looking for an re eggnog recipe. Oh. So I would like to raise a toast to serendipity and the, the uncovering of sweet, sweet cover-ups. Yeah.